Okay. All right. Again, this is the one stop online basic needs and reentry resources center presentation for today. Our relink is a statewide up to date online resource guide for basic needs, reentry, and recovery services in Ohio. It is used every month by thousands of Ohioans, including reentry case managers, parole officers, pastors, families, and those directly in need. Today, Relink Statewide Coordinator is Beth Bethany Fredrickson. She is here today to walk us through how to use this essential resource to find basic needs for returning citizens and their families. In addition, Bethany can walk you through how to register your organization as a community resource. As a bonus, Bethany offers a statewide perspective and examples of how faith communities are and can respond to meeting the, bas the basic needs through community collaboration. So we welcome you today, Bethany, as our presenter for this uh, wonderful session. Thank you so much, Kim. I'm excited to be here. All right, so we're gonna get started um, with a question. And that is, where should we focus our efforts on Ohio? Thank you so much. Yeah, I, um, I was excited to think through this question from the perspective of relink.org. And so just a little bit of background, um, like Kim mentioned, we have an online resource tool that people are utilizing for people struggling with addiction or coming home from incarceration or struggling with homelessness, mental health, all different things. And I will be demonstrating that later um, and showing you all how to utilize it. But through gathering information on these resources, we have developed this database of 7,000 organizations, and that has given us a really interesting picture of where there's gaps in care in the community. And um, through monitoring how people are utilizing our resource tool throughout the state, because we have thousands of people using it every month, um, we're able to track some of the higher needs that might be presenting in the community. So, um, even just calls that we get into our offices about people having needs allow us to have a picture of where the community may have an opportunity to meet some of those needs, whether it's, you know, a faith community or not, or coming together collaboratively with multiple backgrounds. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about is the top resources that are searched for on relink.org. And, you know, we started this in the addiction space, and that is still a huge need, especially with COVID-19 um, and the increases in overdoses. But we have seen that the reentry category on our site is the pages that are within that, the web pages, are it's the top viewed category on our website. And underneath that, so these are, so reentry, addiction, basic needs, um, those are overarching categories. And you'll understand this more when I go to the site. Um, but when it comes to actual services, addiction treatment and then reentry housing is a huge, huge area that is searched on our site. Um, we get calls from people all the time that have uh, a background uh, being involved with the justice system and they're in need of housing. And a lot of times they're in need of not just, not like free housing, a lot of times they're just in need of an apartment. They may have a job, they may be getting back on their feet. Um, they may have been out of, uh, of an institution for a while and they're moving to a new place. but they can't find a place to live because of the regulations that so many apartments have. Um, right now, relink.org for reentry housing, we include more like transitional housing programs. So that would be free housing a lot of times, or it is a more um, constructive environment where people are coming out of an institution and they're transitioning from there into the workforce or whatever that might be. Um, but these are the areas of the state that we have um, reentry housing resources currently. 
And so as you can see, there's some high density areas like Columbus, Cleveland, Cincinnati, the more metropolitan areas where you would expect. There's a lot of areas of the state that have nothing for transitional housing. And people are coming home to these communities and don't have anywhere to go. That is what increases the homelessness population. That's what increases recidivism. And so there is a huge need right now for not only more transitional and reentry housing programs, but also more awareness in each community about what apartments or landlords may be willing to accept somebody with a prior felony or you know, even misdemeanor conviction. So one of the things that I would encourage everybody who is watching this now or maybe watching the recording later um, to work on and see what they can kind of put their heads together on in their community is how can we develop that list of apartments or landlords or things like that so that when someone is coming home to our community, there's a place for them to go. Um, and, you know, maybe you look at this map and you are in one of these counties that doesn't have anything and you're a part of a nonprofit or a faith community and you can look at how to start a transitional housing program. Um, and, and so that's what I wanted to focus on because that's what I see as one of the largest needs. Um, and of course, as this chart shows, I mean, addiction, food, employment, and education, those are areas that you could focus on as well if that's more um, in your area of expertise, if you wanted to start a workforce development program um, or you know, even a mentoring program to help people become more employable through preparing them for, the, for, um, for jobs through resume building. Things like that could even be a program to start at your church or within your faith community um, or nonprofit, depending on you know, where you're at. Um, so that is what I would say is one of the biggest ways that we can focus our efforts in Ohio just based on what we have seen and through the data that we've collected. Um, one of the other questions that I wanted to address <clears throat> and uh, really gets into the meat of what Relink.org is, is what you can do to help someone when it comes, when they come to you and they're in need of, let's say, one of these resources around food, um, clothing, a place to stay, those types of things. Um, as you've seen, there's not all of those resources in every county, um, but for the counties that do have resources, those are included on relink.org in the database that you can search through. So I'm gonna demonstrate that now. So let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Alrighty, so this is Relink.org. This is the search tool that covers all 88 counties. And um, we have, like I said, 7,000 organizations currently listed across the continuum of care for addiction, recovery, reentry. And most recently, we added human trafficking resources. So if someone comes to you and um, they're in need of, let's say clothing, and because they wanna start a job, you can put in any city in the state, so let's say I put in Columbus, and it will filter these buttons by that city. Then I can just click on basic needs, clothing, and it will pull up all the organizations closest to farthest from you that have uh, those services. You can also filter by organization type, um, like gender specific housing, age, payment options. Um, these are all like free clothing resources, but if it was a treatment option, things like that would be um, more applicable to search by insurance. Once you click into here, you can decide on an organization you wanna take a look at. And this will pull up all the services that that organization provides, a little bit about them, how to reach out to them, go to their website, map it, all those different things. You can print this page 
and share it with someone if you would like to. Um, and it's also mobile friendly. So all this pulls up on your phone. You can call directly with these hot links, send an email to the organization, whatever you need to do to help that individual in need that you're working with. Um, every single click path on here, every single button operates pretty much the same. So if you were looking for food pantries in the area, you can click on food, food pantry, and it will display all the ones in the area that have that resource. Um, it even, for food pantries, they have a little bit more specific information about, you know, the zip codes that they accept people from, their hours, all of that is included on here. Um, under the re-entry button, just to show some of those things, we also include employment and education programs. So if someone is in need of a job training program after being released from an institution, um, they wanna develop some skills, you can find local workforce development programs um, that are available. You can also find reentry or second chance employers in the area that have said that they will hire people with prior convictions. Um, Chicken Takeover is a great one. They are all about reentry. They have several locations. They just opened one up in Northeast Ohio as well. And they do a lot for um, helping develop individuals who are <clears throat> previously incarcerated. So, that is how the site works um, and can be used. But I also wanna to touch base on this other portion of how to get involved. So I walked through how to help an individual, but if somebody is, or if you're a part of an organization, a faith community, or just an individual wanting to get involved with this, there, are a lot of different coalitions and community organizations or community collaborations that are working across the state on more like large scale solutions um, within your area. So if you wanted to see what was available near you that you could maybe volunteer and get involved with, you can go to reentry community group slash coalitions. And this will show you all of the collaborative work that is being done in your area. Um, and I think that as a faith community, um, often there's underrepresentation within these groups of the faith community. So this is a great way to see how um, you can plug in and maybe, you know, there's a need within the community that your uh, congregation could meet that you didn't even know about. So, these groups are working um, around reentry, and you know they also offer other services, things like that. But they are collaborating. A lot of times, these things work, or they meet monthly um, and have specific goals that they're trying to meet to reduce recidivism in the community. And um, I also touch on this in the presentation. Um, if I go back to that I put together a map that shows based on our database where all the collaborative work is being done in the state. So these pins are each a um, coalition or community initiative around reentry. And um, I think this is useful because if you are in a community where you see a pin, uh, you can go to relink.org and find out what that one is and how to get involved. And then if you're in a community that doesn't have one, I would look into seeing what you can do to start one. There's people going home to every county in the state, whether it's from a local institution or even from out of state, and they need people to rally behind them and try to work on how to integrate them back into their area. So, um, getting people together around this topic, I think would be really valuable for those counties or cities that don't have an, initi an initiative already happening. So I went through all of this extremely quickly. I'm gonna go back before I go on to these next steps actually and show you how to add your organization. Um, I 
forgot to demo that while I was on the site. So let me go back and do that really quickly and then we'll move on to next steps and some questions. I really want to have a discussion with you all who are joining us and see what your thoughts are kind of around these topics of um, re-entry housing and re-entry initiatives. So if you're a part of an organization and you want to add your services to relink.org, all you have to do, it's free for you to do this, is go to the account portal and register. Just create uh, an account very quickly with a username and password. Your username will be your email. Let us know what organization you're with. And once your account is created, we will reach out to you and let you know if your organization is already in our system. And we can link you to that information that's already in there so you can log in and start making updates. If you're not already in there, we'll let you know and you can go in and add that information. It's a really simple form that you will just go into add new. Once you log in and fill out that form and submit it to us. Once it's submitted to us, we review all the information and let you know if we have questions, things that need verified, if there's anything that looks off to our team. I mean, we've vetted tons of organizations and kind of know what to look for, um, but we will confirm all that with you and then let you know when your information is live and searchable on the site. So it's a very simple and free process to add your information and then you can log in and make updates at any time whenever you're added. Um, so I'm going to go back and go to next steps and then we'll move on to some questions and some discussion. Alrighty. So um, beyond the relink.org database, we do a lot to try to build awareness about resources within the community. We also participate in some community outreach events that we work with a group called Thrive Peer Support to host. Um, those offer Narcan and connection to employment, veteran resources, things like that within the community. We've been doing those since um, before August, we've been working to plan those and their drive-through outreach events. If anybody is interested in learning more about that, please let me know. My contact information will be on the next page. And all of that information, all the information about when we add new services to the site is on our Facebook page. And so if you really want to stay up to date on what we're doing, I would encourage everybody to go there and follow us. Um, just look up relink.org. Um, of course, check out the needs.relink.org site for um, utilizing it to help somebody in need. See if there's any way for you to get involved in your community. If you have any feedback on how um, <clears throat> we can make the site better, please let me know. We're always super open to feedback. Um, add your information to the site if you're a resource and if you have a website where you list resources, we would encourage you to list relink.org to assist us in building awareness about this free tool. So I will move on to questions. I know that I went through that very quickly, so I'm excited to hear what everybody has to say and see how we can continue this discussion. Kim, did we have any questions? Sorry about that, I was unmuting myself. Um, I'm actually following the chat. So if you have any questions, it doesn't look like we have any in the chat right now. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to add them to the chat. We can see those. Um, or if you're having trouble with putting your question in the chat, um, at this point, if you want to just go ahead and unmute and ask your yeah. question, we'd be happy to answer it that way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if anybody has any thoughts around um, like the topic of reentry housing and what you might be seeing in your own community while serving individuals. Um, does anybody have any thoughts on that or, or things that, that that brought up for their community? Bethany, maybe I can start with a question. Yeah. I know that oftentimes uh, when it comes to reentry housing, 
um, there is still a need for housing for those that have um, sexual offenses. Um, that seems yeah. to be a really big need in our area. Um, have you seen anything um, recently that can help aid in that area or maybe recruitment um, of providers that provide service in that area? I have not. I think it's a huge thing that needs to be addressed either you know, on the local level by individual communities and organizations coming together um, or on a state level with more funding. And, you know, that is, uh, <clears throat> that's an advocacy effort that can still be started on the local level. And, you know, sex offenses is a, is a hard thing to think about, like people advocating um, on behalf of individuals, but, the sex offense designation covers a whole swath of charges that can be very minor to very egregious. And so there's individuals who have done something and made a mistake when they were young and they're labeled with that their entire life and they may not be able to find housing and then they may end up committing more crimes. Um, and recidivizing back into the system and, and ending up costing, you know, our society a lot more and um, costing a lot more turmoil for themselves and their family. So I think that the whole topic of reentry housing and housing for those with uh, those offenses and arson is one I've heard is really difficult to, um, to find housing for. Um, I think that there could be more advocacy around both the the state and local level absolutely yeah does anybody else have any thoughts or questions around re-entry well, housing i've got a question uh Bill yeah Taylor here yeah i the basically what i've uh, what i do is i participate uh in a mission called kairos that goes into the prisons on a regular basis okay. and what i'd love to be able to do is utilize this amazing site, wow, what a, what a gift, to be able to encourage the guys on the inside. How might you consider using your site in that way to maybe ask the right kinds of questions and then utilize the information that's in here to be able to direct guys that are getting close to time of out? And my thought is, is maybe even getting some letters with maybe an attachment from a deputy warden or a chaplain specifically out to some type of reentry housing facility or something like that. Um, so just, just your thoughts on that. Yeah, so there's a couple of thoughts that come to mind with that of what you can do. So um, the, D, the Department of Rehabilitation and Corrections, they partner with us heavily to utilize relink.org. Their staff uses it. Um, in their resource libraries to kind of try to prepare people coming home. But I don't think that every single institution is maybe doing that or that everybody who is going to be released is maybe realizing that that's available for them. So if you're going in there, um, what you could do is ask an individual what their needs might be when they're going home. And if you have the capabilities to go on relink.org and put that information together for them you know you can find very quickly here's food pantries in your in the area you're going home to here's the reentry housing programs here's this um you can go through and find the resources that will meet all those needs you could print them off for them and bring it to them if you wanted to um you could also just you know, if there was a reentry program, you could get the information and the address and everything to provide them with if they wanted to write that type of letter um, and in preparation to coming home and see if they'd be accepted into that program or even give them the phone number to reach out, which I know can be complicated because the person has to accept it and all of that. But um, those are some things that you can do. We've gotten calls from people within institutions um, actually that have reached out to me um, on my work phone and I help, you know, find them resources and they write them down and reach out to them on their own. So there's a couple of different ways you can utilize it. It's there and available. We have informational cards that we could send to you if you wanted. Um, they don't have resource information on them, but they have information on the website. Not everybody 
I know that's going to be coming out has access to internet or is super technologically um, skilled, but uh, they can take that to a library and get some assistance with using it. There's all different ways. Um, so yeah, does well, that I, answer? I, yeah, it, it, it really, really does. I, I guess two things. One, I was really surprised when your map popped up. Totally, to be honest, how few facilities. There is no internet access. They definitely don't have internet access there. There's an intranet yeah. they would have. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but you can pass the information through the chaplain. And I would definitely wouldn't burden them with your telephone number because <laughs> <laughs> your phone would get lit up. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. I would do that to you. Yeah, yeah we um, go ahead, Kim jump in on that too. I know um, Bethany has been very helpful for us. Um, you know, one way that we've shared um, the information about Relink too, when we think about individuals that are coming home, we have gotten a hold of some of the informational cards um, that Bethany mentioned, and we've shared those with families. Um, because while their loved one, um, you know, may not always have access to the information, family members, you know, can start looking um, for them. So I know that those cards, we've sent them out um, in correspondence that's going out to families for different family events we've had, or in community events, been able to share those with family members that can in turn uh, pass that information on to their loved ones, um, or look up the resources that they're in need of. Yeah. Yeah, we find a lot of family members or advocates use it. Um, yeah, I get calls like, I get calls from family out of state actually recently. I've started to get a couple calls from people who have a family member in an institution in Ohio that they're trying to plan coming home for them. And uh, they, they're gonna be released into an Ohio community. And of course they're out of state. They have no idea what's available. So um, it becomes a really helpful tool to use for those situations. Bill, did you have something else? Yeah, I was just gonna. I was just gonna ask a follow-up question. If uh, we have a, a division or a, up in our church that's very interested in the uh, and supporting um, the, uh, the folks that are in human trafficking, um, uh, partnering with different uh, a la carte, one of the groups that we we partner mm -hmm. with, also so the catch, and then and then uh, a group of us as well that are. Um, in the uh, prison ministry, if if there was, do you ever do any kind of teaching that would be like for a group setting where we would be on Zoom and then you would be able to do a teaching for our church rather than having the opportunity of doing a bridge? Um, just on just the human trafficking piece, or on on your um, website, the on, whole on, thing on the availability on the, on of the, the website. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. We I would love to do that. I do talks like this with it's small. So either way, you can reach out to me through the email that's on your screen. So I'd take that down and um, I'd be happy to set up a Zoom presentation. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any other questions? Does anybody have any um, <clears throat> maybe scenarios of individuals that they have worked to help that may, you know, have been difficult or any experiences helping an individual that they would want to touch on or ways that this tool can be utilized? I have a quick experience. One. Go ahead. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, we just launched a fatherhood program in Richland County, and I'm in Franklin County. So okay. I'm trying to get resources together for um, fathers. They're correctional based and community based, but like a, apprenticeship opportunities or it's just, it, just any kind of resources that I can build for these fathers. And mm -hmm. I'm in Franklin County, so I'm having a hard time connecting with people from in Richland County and it's kind of like I'm needing to know somebody and name drop. So my question to you is, 
because I was thinking about just taking a trip up there and doing cold calls. But with the pandemic, I didn't know if that would be a waste of my time. What would you? What do you suggest is a good approach for a nonprofit to try to build um, relationships with these, with the resource providers, to to get these services to the um, to the clients? Yeah. So you are you're in Franklin and you're trying to build information and connections with resources in Richland County. Yes, like for example, uh, they say training, they would like help with training, vocational, or a better job. So I did review your site uh, before and I got a list of apprenticeship programs. And I wanted to go a step further and actually contact the program. So when I gave the information to the father, I could say exactly what to do versus just giving him a snapshot on the website. Yeah, so when that's I'm great. calling to get like information or a contact, I'm not able to get anywhere unless I I um, say, well, Tim Hart, or, or give a name of mm. some person who referred me. So I was thinking about just going up there and maybe um, introducing myself in person. But I, I, at this point, I don't know what the best way is. So I can build this resource list for the fathers that I'm working with. Yeah. Are you... Um... Are you asking for like their HR department or their, their like lead on the apprenticeship program and they're not responding to you? That's so, that's interesting to me. Yeah, I, well, I think that Richland is a difficult county, I guess, and maybe because I'm out of town and I'm calling over the phone. So I didn't know if maybe a letter, if I should do a letter to try to get to, because it's hard to get to, through that first person if they're not familiar with them it's like oh we'll take a message or I'm not sure who you need to speak to mm. but I'm thinking is in person better should I send a letter should or I even in, um, maybe connecting with somebody who does more re-entry work in that county could be good so I'm not sure I'd have to look back at our database to see if there's a re-entry initiative in that county but reaching out to them and maybe saying like hey I'm trying to get in touch with apprenticeship programs do you know like the good contact people here because I think maybe they'll have those relationships developed um, okay. I could also connect you with the DRC maybe contact that's over that county um, they could maybe assist you with that or job and family services contact their um, Ohio means jobs may know okay. of some key people since they're like in that employment space all the time. Um, so just send me an email and I'll see okay. how but I can I think connect that's a great idea. I can, I can definitely, instead of trying myself, try partners who may already have that situation. Yeah, or I know, because Richland County, that's Ashland, right? A Mansfield. That's Mansfield, okay. Oh yeah, Ashley County. Okay, so I I know that like the the UMADOP organization out there is very active in the community, so they could be a good contact. Okay. To reach out to, and their information should be on our site. So, but yeah, reach out to me. I'd love to help make that connection. Okay, thank you so much, Bethany. I appreciate you. No problem. Do we have any other thoughts or questions for the group? Yes, I have a question on the, um, this is uh, Charles Stevenson. Um, Hi, Charles. From Columbus, Columbus Umadab. Oh, great. Um, Hi. Okay. Uh, you mentioned something about the information cards because I, well, I haven't done it since the uh, pandemic started, but we take programs into uh, the institutions. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you mentioned something about the information card. Is that collecting information from the uh, people that are coming out to assess their needs? Is that with the information? No, card? it just yeah. has, it's almost like, it's just like a brochure type card that has information. So it's more about. for them and which, what is offered then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's, that's the piece I, I want to get. Okay. So we would, okay. All right, I understand, okay. Yeah, Thanks. so if that's anything that somebody is interested in receiving, um, just send me an email and I can send those info cards to you. Um, but 
like I said, you know, it just depends on someone's capabilities and them or their families can use it, you know, either on their phone or at a library to look up resources. So, um, and, and, and we email you to get those. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll do. Yep. I'd be happy to put some in the mail to you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Charles. Um, are any, any other questions? Um, or does anybody have any thoughts on how they might like to start anything in their own community? Does have anybody have any interest in doing that? I'm not sure exactly what all areas of the state are represented here, but I definitely think um, it'd be cool to see that. If not, it's a it's okay. Um, Bethany, but, I you mentioned um, you showed the map. Um, yeah. But, um, are there particular counties where you are looking for additional information or resources in particular? Could you kind of go over that again? Um, and maybe let us yeah. know some places where you know maybe we need more information for. Um, I think honestly, the biggest thing that. I would love to see done in Ohio is communities coming together to establish those re-entry friendly, felony friendly um, apartments or um, landlords. I think if somebody, if each individual community bit off a piece of this and you know, even if they just did it for their own community and we could pass that along to the institutions, that would be incredible because, um, you know, people may be in an institution in one area of the state, but they're going home to another and they don't know what's available there. And that's why they use relink.org, but the information about apartments and things like that is so, it, it, it requires so much more involvement within the community than we're able to have at this time. And so it really has to be something that is gathered on the ground level and then brought up. We, I mean, if we got multiple communities that were doing this, we would love to create that list and put it online so that everyone has access to it, but um, it just hasn't been done yet. So. I would, I would start asking around in your own community, like are there places that take um, individuals that may have a background and even one place, like getting an email about one place that I could spread the word about but could make a huge difference in somebody else's life. It could really, um, you know, be the difference between homelessness or not, which we've seen as a, a major problem. Um, I was just meeting with the, the homeless coalition in the Cleveland area earlier this week and we asked what the number one barrier was to long-term housing and that was the number one barrier and some places even public housing they have a lifetime look back on misdemeanors <laughs> and so that can be a disqualifier to even you know regular government housing so I, I think that there's not a lot of awareness about that. Like I kind of assumed that that would be an option for people, but it's really not. Um, I mean, I think that, you know, is case by case, depending on what public housing provider you're working with, but that is what they're seeing as the number one barrier. Um, and so when we're looking at homelessness and recidivism, I think that's something as a community we could come together around. Um, so if anybody has any information about that in their own area, I'd love to see that. If anybody is in one of these communities and thinks that this is wrong and they do have a reentry housing program, um, please, please let me know. I'd love to get it added. Bethany, if I, if, if I understand what you're saying is, is, are you asking some of the folks to volunteer to pick up the phone? and call apartment owners and ask them if they would accept uh, for re-entry people? Is it that easy? I don't know if it's that easy. Um, I, think, I think a lot of apartment complexes will not if they're owned by a more corporate management company because they have like those protocols set up 
um, but more smaller scale landlords and um, individuals that just have a couple properties may be willing to. So I guess, you know, I only if someone really feels called to do it, but I guess if people are asking, what can I do in my own community to help individuals in reentry? This is something that you can do. And I think that, yeah, calling places is a place to start at least because they might, they might not accept people, but they may know of someone who does. Um, and I'd love to see a list like that on relink.org, but I also understand that some people might not want to like put out there that they're taking in individuals into their housing with um, prior conviction. So if that's something that needs to be kept just kind of more on a local level of here's who to call and they know the places that will take people, I mean, that's fine too. I just think that it's such a problem right now. Um, and so if people are asking how to get involved, that's how. I believe we had a question from um, Augustine. Um, I have unmuted you. Please feel free to ask your question. I don't believe we're able to hear you, um, but Augustine? Did they type it in the chat at all? I was going to say, if there's a problem with the question too, if you're we're having trouble hearing you, feel free to type it into the chat and we'd be happy to address it there as well. Oh, I see something just popped up. Yeah. Oh, they can't unmute okay. themselves. Yeah. I've unmuted you, so you should be able to. Hmm. Um, well, try typing your question in the chat since that seemed to work, um, if you can, and I've got it up, so I'll, I'll respond. And we'll go from there. But yeah, I'm excited to see, okay, I've called apartments and they usually won't give you the answer. They'll just see how the person see how the person can apply. <clears throat> yeah, I can see that as being a response. Um, and then they get their application fee. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, it really would have to be an effort of educating places and, and getting places on board to be a part of the solution to this problem. Um, I think is what it would have to be, not just like, hey, will you take people um, and they're kind of like removed from what the bigger problem is. It would be calling a place and talking with whoever the lead is of that um, and then making sure that they're educated on, on why you're asking and that you're trying to establish something not just for this one individual, but to refer others. Um, okay, they said that the Urban League in Columbus has a list of landlords that may rent to people with criminal backgrounds. That's incredible. That's great. Um, so that's what I'd love to see more lists of. And knowing now that you have that list um, will help me if I get a call about somebody in Columbus um, because I, I have gotten a couple. So. And that's another great thing, um, just as a, you know, um, for your organization to say, um, you know, just how much we appreciate it, because I know that we have worked with individuals that have paid application fee after application fee, um, yeah. only to be denied. And so to be able to have a resource like this, where we know that this is someone um, who they can call and, um, and be able to get assistance from instead of them just kind of cold going out there. Um, is always helpful because that's discouraging, you know, of course. So it's, it's good yeah. to know that, that you have already vetted those individuals that are listed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would encourage more communities and organizations to do that, create that list, um, and 
maybe Augustine, I don't know if you want to put your contact information in there, but if people have questions about how you did that, I mean, that might be helpful if they're able to reach out to, I don't know if you're a part of the Urban League or if you know who put that list together, but that could be a great resource for other communities who are trying to do it. And also maybe a Maybe we'll be contacting our urban leagues <laughs> to see yeah. the same thing so we can reach out to you and let you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the main thing I would, okay. Okay, yeah. So they said that they work at Columbus State but can reach out to Urban League for an updated list. That would be awesome. Um, so I'd encourage people to, yeah, just be keeping this in mind if you're trying to think of <clears throat> if you're a part of anything in the community and it comes up, what can we do for reentry? Um, that could be one helpful next step to take um, on a larger scale. And then using relink.org for if you're helping individuals. Um, so, yeah. Well, Kim, I am, I'm fine with, you know, if people have more questions, uh, feel free to speak up, but I'm also okay with ending a little bit early if we need to today. Um, I will be hosting my like live exhibitor booth after this. So if anybody wants to join me there and ask any questions as well, I will be there, um, I think until like 3.15. So that's just a Zoom link and you should be able to access that through Whova. I also sent it out um, to, in an email to a bunch of, to everybody who registered for this session. So please feel free to stop by there. Um, Kim, do you have any other thoughts? We just want to thank you so much um, for your presentation today and for sharing the information that you did. Um, I know that um, as I mentioned before, we definitely have utilized resource for clients that we've worked with and also um, sharing it with other, other providers too, that is something that they could share with their clients as well. So we appreciate the work that you do and thank you for um, giving us a task to help you do it, to do it by forwarding information to you when we find out providers that could be added to your database or letting them know that they can reach out to you. Um, and yeah. connected to you. So we thank everyone who was able to join us today. Um, again, as Bethany mentioned, you can go through your Whova app um, and you can go to the exhibitor station and um, actually join her uh, in the one-stop uh, exhibitor booth. And uh, again, if you have additional questions or if you know someone that missed this presentation, we have been recording it and we will be able to, they will be able to go back and listen to it and um, if there was any contact information um, about it that you missed, you'll be able to access that in the Whova app after this is over as well. So Bethany's information will also still be available to you. Yes, thank you so much. And thank you, Kim, for your continued partnership with the 4-7. I know that you know we've worked with you for a while, so that's been great. I was excited to see you were on this. Um, thank you everybody so much for being a part of it today. I hope to see you soon. Thanks everyone and enjoy the rest of the sessions.